Welcome back, gentlemen, to my channel. This uh, early days of uh, February of 2021. In this video, I want to talk about why living in the United States of America for a heterosexual man is probably amongst the worst places on earth that you can live. I know this may sound strange, but I think to those who have traveled extensively around the world, and I don't mean just to Canada and Mexico, no, I mean travel to all quadrants of the world. If you've been to Southeast Asia, if you've been to Eastern Europe, if you've been to Latin America and Central America, if you've been to certain regions of Africa and Australasia and Micronesia, if you've traveled all over the world, and if you've experienced what types of freedoms, what types of entertainment, and for what amount of money is available, you would quickly agree with me that United States in many respects for a, a heterosexual man is the worst place to live. Now, we're not talking about the, uh, the financial opportunities which is of course very true it's indeed true that you can come from any country in the world be of any race and uh, have an opportunity to open your own business and become very financially successful in the US you won't have much time to uh, enjoy that money you won't have much time to do much with it in the US if you want to have fun you need to basically head to the nearest airport uh, unless you're married and settled down and, and, and then you can't with, with kids and everything. But that part of it, of course, it's true. I'm not going to denounce that, although certain elements in the government are doing their level best to, to take that advantage away as well. But that's another video. What I want to talk about in this video is that for a, a, a single or married heterosexual man, just about anywhere abroad, in Southeast Asia, select places, select countries, in uh, South America, even in Central America, places like Panama, and uh, in uh, Eastern Europe, there are so many more facets of entertainment and uh, pleasure available to a man than there is in the United States. So many clubs, so many lounges, so many places you can go to get what you want that in entire United States, it doesn't even exist, let alone uh, it being accessible to you. And if it exists in, to some degree uh, in some geographical places, it is at such higher price that it does not make it worth ex to experience. If you're living in uh, Eastern Europe, if you're living in South America, and if you're just just to give an example, if you've just got an, an average income, uh, meaning you can afford uh, a place of your own and, uh, and uh, you can afford to take a woman out to dinner, not even a fancy uh, $300 dinner, just enough to pay for her dinner, you'll basically have your pick of the litter of, of uh, women. And uh, you know, if you want to marry them and, and, and uh, form a family, fine. If you don't want to marry them and, and be a, a bachelor and, and, and enjoy a different woman every week, that is completely and fully available to you at your will. Now, what do we all, us men, what do we work for? We work for to have money to buy a, a fancy home, to have a couple of cars, and to have women. Look at Jeff Bezos, the wealthiest man on earth. Uh, he got completely swept away by a woman to a degree that he was willing to literally sign off 50% of his, everything he's worked for since the first day of, of his job just to be free from his wife and kids so that he could be with this woman. And uh, if, you take, if you pay attention to what I'm saying, a, same, uh, as a, a normal man any any man any any average uh, wage earner can have that overseas in south america in central america in eastern europe in asia you can have a different woman every week 
you can have your the woman basically you're the prize you're at a buffet and you can have your pick of the litter you can taste a different meal every night if you want if that's if that's your thing that's available to you whereas try doing that in the u.s i'm not even going to talk about the major disadvantages of divorce laws in the u.s forget about getting married if you have any assets worth uh, speaking of forget about uh the prospect of divorce because you will be destroyed uh, that's also another video but that's another major advantage of uh, not living in the u.s because if you're subject to u.s laws although western europe canada and u.s have uh, pretty much uh same uh, you know disadvantages uh, for the man if you're getting a divorce but nothing no place is worse than a u.s where the divorce laws are stacked up mile high against you and you are basically the, the criminal who's going to get punished for having ever made the mistake of getting married so that's another advantage that we're not even going to cover in this uh, video but as far as availability of entertainment i talk to people here in the in the u.s that are very well healed very well healed and i tell you when i tell them what are you going to do tonight they put their head down and they shake it you know because their only option really is going to these uh, obnoxious loud sports bars with giant tvs which destroys the mood and uh, get drunk and basically self-medicate themselves so they don't think about uh, you know what they're um, what they're having to face at the end of the night they're gonna have to go home right and uh, they eventually they eventually believe that this is the best there is you know because going away and uh, being free and doing whatever they want and coming home whenever they want and doing whatever they want whenever they want is so out of the question for them you know that they don't even think about it they they learn to become content with this ridiculous life of waiting for the weekend so they can go to their local bar and get drunk you know if they're married they're gonna tell the wife i'm gonna head down the, you know to the bar down you know down the street whatever to our local bar and get drunk and if they're divorced they go out with their friends and and, and get smashed and and come home and to them that's a that's a, a glorious night no it's not if you if you have experienced these places that I have mentioned around the world, and if you've experienced what amount, what little amount of money it takes to partake in, in pleasures that are not even known to an average American here. And that's really sad because if you're born and raised in America, you're told from a young age that this is the best place in the world, this is the greatest country in the world, this is, everybody's dying to come here, which in many respects, for economic reasons, it's true. Many people come here for the economic reasons and suffer because they wish they could have the same thing back home because the pleasures that are available to them at home back home is based non-existent in the u.s non-existent you know where in the u.s you can go and uh, in what big city you can go and sit in a, in a in a classy lounge and listen to soft piano music you know with a high-end decor and and uh talk to your friend you know and everything in in a classy area you know the most the most classy environment i mean in in here you get these loud bars you know where you got the tattoo crowd you know 18 to 25 there and and other bars where there are giant sports bars with 20 tvs showing sports there's just no sense of class and style and grace here because the culture does not demand it so the business side does not provide it if one opens up you'll see quickly they'll close down and they install the big tvs and and turn it into a sports bar because that's where the money is here it's really sad but they got fancy they got interesting uh, places for example in santiago chile i was there a, a few years ago they've got this bar where they call it cafe y piernas where you have uh, girls in miniskirts serving you coffee and men start going there at one in the afternoon you know for after uh, lunch coffee to uh, you know to look at girls have coffee and talk amongst themselves and you know enjoy and enjoy the the view they've got all kinds of clubs and lounges and um, interesting venues to suit all kinds of tastes that don't even exist here they have them in germany in holland in belgium 
and uh, in Eastern Europe uh, as well as in South America you don't even find that kind of here so you know no matter what level of income you're at in the US if you're a heterosexual man those kind of things are just not available to you you're you're deluded into thinking that you're living the life or you're living in the best place in the world but everybody else wants to come when in reality you have if you haven't traveled if you haven't experienced you have no clue what a very small amount of money can buy in countries overseas if you know where to go uh, I've uh, traveled to 131 countries now and uh, I know what I'm talking about when I say people always ask me um, you know you've been to all these places where is the best place the thing is my question always is depends on what you like you can never say what is the best place in the world unless you know what the person enjoys maybe the person is into skiing maybe the person is into nightlife maybe the person is into fashion and shopping you know maybe the per person is into best places for cigars you know it depends on what what turns you on maybe someone's into nature wants mountains and streams and everything where someone likes the city life so it's very difficult and impossible it's like asking someone what's your favorite food but you know it depends on your mood it depends what you like if you know if you know what you like I can name you 10 places that you can go around the world where you can have the things that you want readily easily and at 1 20th of the cost that they're available in the US and the best way to discover this is either to consulting with people who have already been there and done that like reading a book where someone else has done done the research and, and you're just enjoying the benefits of it or travel travel there is no better way for you to spend your money my friends than traveling and seeing the world and learning how others do it what things are available where at and at what price what scope of things some things are not even available in the US at any price and why would you want to limit your life to where you're born one of the most beautiful sayings I've heard was that not all of us are f of the place in which uh, we happen to be uh, born at you know and the only way you'll discover what is the best place is by traveling experiencing and seeing it for yourself then you go for example to somewhere like uh, Brazil and you go aha uh -huh, this is the place that I love you know this is the climate this is the beach life this is the lifestyle attitude of the people the hours they keep etc 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 so uh, I hope uh, this has uh, shed some light and encouraged you and kind of opened your eyes as to what's available where for what money and that you can maybe have your mind open to think to realize that uh, where you are is not necessarily where you can have the best quality of life all the best to you gentlemen until the next video